Yes, sir. You gentlemen look like educated men of good taste. I have here some rare old first editions. Si le vous embête. He's not bothering us. I'm interested in his books. Light beer. Oui, monsieur. Now, here are the complete works of Wilhelm Shakespeare, an old German writer. I like it. We move tonight. Orders from Berlin. Dr. Tobel is to be across the border before dawn. But we have had orders not to break into his house, and he hides there. Hasn't been outside in weeks. The Fiora wants no trouble with Switzerland at the moment. We must be very careful. If we can't break in, and he won't come out? When the Fiora needs something as badly as he needs the Tobel bomb site, there is always a way. Dr. Tobel is interested in my scientific volumes. You see my forged Swiss papers, and he believes I come from Luzern. No, gentlemen, the price is much too low. I could not possibly sell so rare a book with such a price. I will induce Dr. Tobel to come on a visit to my shop as we pass the alleyway. You are interested in this book? A rare old set of Bismarck papers. One last warning. I've just had word from Berlin. The English fine hunter will try to take Dr. Tobel from under our very eyes. We are sending a stupid, bungling amateur detective. His name is Holmes, or Holmes, or some such foolishness. He will never escape from Switzerland alive. Now, quick, let me thrown out of here. And watch for my signal from Dr. Tobel's window. But, gentlemen, you promised to buy one of my books. I told you no. Ah, stop bothering us. They are not so great. Price uh, left. Yes, please, all this is in the future. I'm going to the French, English. Oh, I hate those languages. Calm yourself, my dear Brown. In a short time, there will be only one language. Dr. Tobel, I have here some very interesting scientific books. I thought you might like to see them. Please come in. He's entering the house. Quickly, get the car and have the motor running. I will follow. Herr X will have the Tobel bomb site at the fuel while this Holmes is still having his tea. What are you doing? I am sorry. For four months, every move I have made has been watched. I am not a coward, Mr. Holmes. They won't watch you anymore. Tonight, they intend to take you forcibly across the German border. Then why do we wait here, doing nothing, like rats in a trap? Calm yourself, my dear Dr. Tobel. We shall not only escape their trap, but we shall also take the cheese away with us. But, but how? The four sections of your bomb site fit inside these ponderous tomes. Although I must confess that I shied at the thought of disemboweling a complete set of Charles Dickens. Ah, oh, but you cannot hide me in a hollow book. My dear fellow, I am sorry that my good friend Dr. Watson isn't here to explain to you that my preparations are never slipshod. Stefan, Eric, why do you call my servants? Your servants, yes, but tonight they assume new roles. Let me present Dr. Tobel and our old friend, the bookseller. Holmes, it is so simple. Yes, the obvious always appears simple. Quick now, we must leave. Stefan, the knapsack.
Frederick are proving excellent decoys. And the Gestapo has been fooled? Completely. Their servants are leading them into the next street. But what will happen to Stefan and Eric? Nothing, don't worry. I've taken care of that. The way is clear. Come on, quick. Take the Nazi's own car. One must adapt oneself to the tools at hand. And you think you made them believe you're a harmless old bookseller? Yes, I've always felt that a thorough knowledge of the classics might come in handy. But how can we get across the border? And through France. There's no need to get across. At this very moment, a Royal Air Force plane is waiting for us at a secret landing place. How long before we arrive in London? In a very few minutes. We're passing over Dover now. Thank you. Get used to our London blackouts, Dr. Tobel. Dr. Watson's. Very untidy fellow. What are we going to do with, with these? A problem of the most elementary nature, my dear Dr. Tobel. You are going to keep them here? I have always believed in the theory, originally projected by Edgar Allan Poe, the American writer, that the best place to hide anything is where everyone can see it. Yes, but uh, you will remember, no doubt, in Poe's story, The Purloined Letter. And the missive in question was always in plain view. Hands up, gentlemen. Scotland Yard, quick. Mrs. Hudson. Oh, why, it's Mr. Holmes. <laughs> Holmes? Hello, Watson, old fellow. It's good to see you again. Telephone. Hello? Who do you want? Oh, yes, you're Scotland Yard. I'm afraid there's been a little mistake. Well, you didn't get angry. We all make mistakes at times. What? Well, if we didn't, you'd be out of a job. <laughs> Dr. Tobel. This is my friend and associate, and as you may have observed, my watchdog, Dr. Watson. How do you do, sir? How do you do? Dr. Tobel and I flew in from Zurich this evening. You can put that thing away now, Watson. Dr. Tobel, awarded the Massingham request for physics in 1939. My dear Watson, there is only one Dr. Tobel. Without Mr. Holmes, there would have been no Dr. Tobel, I am afraid. But I thought you were living in America, sir. I have been working in Switzerland for the past two years. And Holmes got you out? In the nick of time. There was not a point he overlooked. Every contingency was foreseen and provided for. It was magnificent. Thank you, Doctor. The problem is not without its interesting points. Is there anything you would like, Mr. Holmes? Oh, thank you, Mrs. Hudson. You can go to bed now. You gave me an awful fright dressed up like that. Well, good night, sir. He's quite right. You can't blame me for jumping to the conclusion that I did. He looked like a broken-down musician. Holmes, why didn't you take your fiddle with you? I never did think much of this dressing up business. It was necessary, I assure you. The Gestapo was close on our heels. Oh, really? This is Sherlock Holmes. 
I want to speak to Sir Reginald Bailey, please. Reginald Bailey? Is that the fellow who played Rugger for Blackheath? Yes, Watson. Oh. Hello, Sir Reginald. Home speaking. Yes, from Baker Street. I have Dr. Tobell with me. Oh, thank you. Very well, then. I'll meet you in half an hour. There must be no delay. I'll arrange with Sir Reginald to have the test tomorrow morning. I suggest that only cabinet ministers and your best aviation experts be present. Naturally. Watson, I leave Dr. Tobell in your care. Give him a sedative. This has been a strenuous business, and he has a long day ahead of him again tomorrow. Certainly, Holmes, of course. He shall sleep in my bedroom. I'll keep watch till you return. Thank you. It is not necessary to guard me. I am quite safe now. Safe, Dr. Tobell? I shouldn't count on it for a second. But, Mr. A Holmes... A great deal may depend on your safety. And the enemy understands that just as well as we do. Good night. Keep alert, Watson. Yes, of course. A couple of these and you'll sleep peacefully through a blitz. Uh, thank you. You better start undressing at once or you'll find yourself fast asleep in the middle of taking off your trousers. Well, I'll sit over here and keep an eye on things. Oh, by the way, if you're nervous, call out. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Doctor. Oh, funny. Both saying the same thing at the same time. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Doctor. <laughs> Yes, I'm tidy full of homes. I don't have to tell you how much this means to us. We shall know a great deal more about the bomb site after the demonstration, Sir Reginald. The war office have a pretty good idea of the value of the Tobel bomb site, just as the Nazis have. However, oh, if you'd care to place Dr. Tobel under the uh, protection of Scotland Yard until tomorrow. No, no, tomorrow. no, that won't be necessary. I shall personally deliver Dr. Tobel to your representatives on Salisbury Plain in plenty of time for the demonstration. Thank you. Good night, Sir Reginald. Good night, Mr. Holmes. until he comes out. Is that what the Americans call doodling? It is more serious than you could possibly realize, Charlotte. been separated for so long. I couldn't bear it if anything should part us again. I want to work with you, and I want to know every minute where you are. Even for you to know the details of my mission in London, 
is to sign your death warrant. If you are in real danger, I want to share it. There is one thing you can do. Guard this envelope. If anything happens to me, see that it reaches the hands of Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Mr. Sherlock Holmes? Yes. I pray I never have to deliver it. No. Since the blackout, those bodies have become quite a nuisance. Oh. I say, you'd better come with me and have that fixed up. Oh, thank you. Just lean on my arm, that's it. It's impossible. He's asleep in my bed. I've been here all the time. If anything's happened to him... Tobel! All right? Ah, it is nothing. Here, sit down here. Let's have a look. Oh, it doesn't look too bad. Who patched you up? The police doctor? Yes. He looks as if you'd been attacked. Obviously, my dear Watson. Dr. Tobel. Do you suspect the woman of arranging the trap? Woman? What woman? She's blonde, five foot six, full-lipped and very affectionate. Oh, really? You've known her for a long time. You were attacked after leaving her apartment. Holmes, how do you know this? The face powder on your coat tells me of her height and her affection for you. You uh, held her close before departing. <laughs> Still it, Holmes? It's all there for the trained eye to read, Watson. But look here, why couldn't he have been attacked on his way to the woman's apartment? The mark of a blow has erased some of the powder. Obviously, if the attack came first, the powder would have remained undisturbed. And the full lips? That was a guess. I never guess, Watson. You have rubbed the lipstick from your face with the handkerchief you now hold in your hand. And that amount of lipstick never came from a pair of thin lips. And the blonde hair? Good gracious me. Mr. Holmes, I am glad you are on my side. Well, in that case, you will desist from disobeying my orders and slipping out while your bodyguard sleeps his watch away. It won't happen again, Holmes. I was sitting in front of the fire. All right, Watson, all right. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, can you describe your assailant? I never saw him. A great figure came at me in the dark. I felt a stunning blow on my head and, and instantly fingers were at my throat. But you must have noticed something about him. Think, man. A thing of little consequence to you may mean a great deal to me. Wait. Wait a moment. There was one thing. Long fingers at my throat like, like steel. And then, then a, an odor, a heavy drug-like odor. A drug? Opium? That is it. I am sure of it now. Well, I suggest we get the remains of a good night's sleep. Remember, the test takes place tomorrow morning on Salisbury Plain. The principle of Dr. Tobel's device involves the use of three sonic beams. Is that right, sir? That appears to be it. There he is.
gentlemen. That load would sink any ship in the world. We must consider the possibility of good piloting and a lucky hit. I'd like to see another try of it. So would I. They want you to try again, sir. He is coming into position now, sir. We're on the course now, sir. Gentlemen, how do you like the bomb site now? Marvelous. You'll we'll revolutionize the aerial bombardment. Inspector Lestrade. Yes, Sir Reginald. I hope Scotland Yard is taking every precaution to guard Dr. Tobel and his equipment. Two plainclothes men ride with him in his car, sir, and four others follow in another one, sir. Good. He's coming to my office in Whitehall as soon as he lands. Shall we start, gentlemen? Yes. <laughs> such ideal conditions for the test. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it myself. We've been through a lot, Holmes. But thank goodness he's safe now. Uh, you brought your apparatus with you? No, sir, I did not. I did not. But why not? It must be lodged in the most impregnable vault in this building until we're ready to start manufacture. I have arranged for a little office of my own. I intend to supervise the manufacture myself. But you... You offered it to our government for our use. Everything Mr. Holmes has done has been with that idea in view. I still offer it to your government, but no one else will know the secrets involved. I have devised a plan to guard my invention, a plan as intricate as the bomb site itself. If you imagine for one moment, please. I will not change my mind, Sir Reginald. I am taking the matter into my own hands. Just what do you propose to do, Dr. Tobel? I am sorry. I cannot reveal the details of my plan for the present. Do you think that's wise? I regret, gentlemen, I cannot change my decision. I shall work independently. Can't you persuade him, Holmes? But supposing something should happen to you, Dr. Tobel? You know, there's already been one attempt on your life. And if Holmes' suspicions are right... Quiet, Watson. There is no use discussing it, gentlemen. My mind is made up. Scotland Yard will redouble the guard about you, Doctor. In fact, we'll uh, quadruple it. That is just what I do not wish done, Inspector. Hmm? That would only draw attention to my activities. Hmm. Good day, gentlemen. Just the same. I'll have my men watching him every moment from now on. No, no, wait, Lestrade. We must not offend Dr. Tobel. We must remember that he, as a citizen of Switzerland, is under no obligation to give us his invention. We must do as he asks. Uh, don't you agree, Holmes? To be sure, Sir Reginald. I'm not officially connected with the government, and I intend to remain on the case. Good, good. That is, if Inspector Lestrade doesn't mind. Not at all, Mr. Holmes. We're always glad to have you hanging around. Thank you. You can put those away now, Lestrade. I am entrusting this to you because, first of all, you are a Swiss. And second, there is no doubt in my mind of your ability. I'm honored, Dr. Tobel. I have divided the mechanism of my invention into four units. Each is meaningless without the others. You have delivered the other three? Yes. No one but myself knows the identity of the four scientists working on the four units. Their names are not even known to each other. I think I understand. From what you tell me, it will be easy to reproduce the unit assigned to me in any quantity you wish. I knew I could rely on you. I will get in touch with you as soon as I have made the rest of my arrangements. Uh, no, no, uh, the back door, if you please, Professor Hoffner. Au revoir. Au revoir.
Hello? Yes, Lestrade? Oh. Very well. What is it, Holmes? Just as I feared. Lestrade's men report that Tobel is missing. Missing? I was afraid of this. How long has he been missing? Practically since he walked out of your office yesterday. If you'd only given me the address of this place, I shouldn't have had to waste so much time finding it. Empty. The bomb site's gone. I didn't expect to find it here, Sir Reginald. This is a pretty mess. If you knew this was going to happen, why the devil didn't you do something about it? You can rely on Holmes implicitly, Sir Reginald. Joe Bell's gone, and heaven alone knows where. Well, it serves me right for listening to that crack-brained idea of his. He dismissed Lestrade's men, and they went. Leaving him here alone and unguarded. Holmes, if anything has happened to Tobel, if his invention falls into the hands of Germany, it will be a major disaster for England. Christmas wrapping. He did his Christmas shopping in plenty of time. Yes, curious. Do you, do you notice anything, Holmes? Scent. Perfume. Yes, I noticed it the moment we entered the room. Claire de Lune. One of the rarer essences and very expensive. That woman again. Undoubtedly. Give me Inspector Lestrade. Sherlock Holmes calling. So Holmes is finally stumped. First time I've heard him call for help. Call for help, indeed. He's only just beginning his investigation. Lestrade, this is Holmes. Check the records and trace a call made on my private telephone at Baker Street at approximately 12 o'clock on the night of Dr. Tobel's arrival in London. Finally stumped, eh, Sir Reginald? Yes, Lestrade. Wait a minute. Charlotte, Haberley. 34, St. George's Street, flat B. Excellent, Lestrade. Thank you. Where is Dr. Tobel? I can't tell you. You mean you won't tell me? I don't know. How many Christmas packages did you take to him, Miss Aberley? Five. He dismantled his bomb site and packed the units in four of the boxes. Is that correct? Pardon me. Hello? Yes? This is Miss Aberley. Why, why, someone must have stolen it. On Richmond Bypass. Yes. Yes, I'll arrange to have it removed. Yes. At once. Now I can be frank with you, Mr. Holmes. Dr. Tobel has disappeared. They found my car on Richmond Bypass, wrecked. I loaned it to him last night. For what purpose, Miss Eberle? He wouldn't tell me. But he said that if anything should happen to him, I was to give you this. Holmes, then he must have expected something. Yes. His envelope has been opened and resealed. Oh, but that isn't possible. It hasn't been out of my hands. We meet again, Mr. Holmes. What? Why, that's not the message. It isn't even the same paper. I saw Dr. Tobel draw little uh, sets of figures. What kind of figures? Well, they, they looked like little dancing men. Dancing men? That's curious. Who's been in this apartment since Dr. Tobel entrusted that envelope to your care? Why, no one. I've had no visitors. Think. Possibly a tradesman. No. Only the one for a few minutes. And that one? A workman. He came to fix my light switch. He couldn't have possibly... Did you send for him? Why, no. My lights went out, and soon afterwards he knocked at my door and told me the porter had sent him up. That's where he worked. But he wasn't alone in this room more than five minutes. And he did fix the lights. They went on again. The switch hasn't been touched. The paint still covers the screw heads. He simply threw the main switch in the basement, pretended to work on this one, and after a few moments, an accomplice threw the main switch back on. But in those few minutes... Did you get a look at his face? No, only a glance. Now I realize he kept his face averted. But he was a large man. Yes, he was large. His eyes, heavy-lidded, a thin film over the pupils. Van Holmes, you, you really I remember think... now, his eyes, 
They were like a snake's. Miss Aberley, Dr. Tobel is being held by one of the most brilliant men in the history of crime. Come along, Watson. There isn't a moment to lose. Goodbye, Miss Aberley. Oh, goodbye, Miss Aberley. I don't see why I'm not allowed to go with you. You have your own mission, Watson. Yes, to take a sealed note to Inspector Lestrade. While you search Soho... I shall not be searching for him. I shall permit him to find me in the character of a murderous Lasker once in his employ. And whom I may add is still in jail. Yes, but after all these years... Make no mistake, Watson. This is not a duel of intellect with a cruel but single-minded Gestapo killer. This is our greatest problem. With England as the stake and our antagonist... Professor Mariotti. We've got to beat him. Hmm. Once he's behind bars, I think I shall entitle my memoirs of these adventures The End of Mariotti. An excellent title, Watson. But uh, we must arrange that it isn't Mariotti who's left to write the memoirs. I'm singing. I'm singing. Oh, no, I'm singing. I do. <laughs> you blooming war threat. Been in jail, ain't you? I, you know. I heard from the blighter what left you to swing instead of him. You know who I mean, matey. I know. I'll have to kill him. Would it be worth ten pounds to you? You know where he lives? For ten pound, I know. Only got two. Goodbye, mate. It. Five. Ten pounds on nothing, you lying even. You dirty titty. Well, that ain't named so much to ask for what, for what you want to know. You make good bargain. <laughs> that does it. Well? You remember Angel's Court? Huh? Then follow your nose through the alley till you come to Jack Brady's carpenter shop. He can tell you where the blighter is at this very moment. <laughs> you come too. Me? <laughs> if you lie. All right, mister, I'll come along with you. Easy, matey, easy. Follow me. Please, Governor. I ain't, I ain't had nothing to eat for two days. Stop Please, go away. First to Eden, but there's good money to spend for information. Oh. 
What's he want to know? He give me uh, five pounds to bring him to someone who could tell him the whereabouts of you know who. You know, tell me I cut two throat. Cost you another five, huh? <laughs> five pounds more, eh? <laughs> you pay him. Me? Come on, you. <laughs> Come on, Pam. <laughs> I'll tell you all right, I will. The truth, and that's a fact. The blighters in Davy Jones's locker are feeding the fishes he is, deader than a blinking mackerel. Now, nah, ain't that worth a fiver? <laughs> <laughs> oh. I tell you, he's alive. And I say he's been dead these many years. <laughs> you lie. Easy there, Jack Brady. I would say you were wrong and Mr. Sherlock Holmes was correct. Good evening, Professor Moriarty. Welcome, Holmes. My men have instructions to bring anybody here who inquires for me. They haggle while I watch. An admirable disguise, by the way. It fooled them completely. Of course, it didn't fool me. I never intended that it should. I meant only that it should bring us face to face. <laughs> Just like old times, eh? A battle of wits, of superior intellects. I may say I've been expecting you since I made off with your precious Dr. Tobel. And his code. Ah, yes. And his code. But valuable as your doctor and his code are to my business, I think my main interest in this affair is the chance it gives me to battle with you again. Mariate, this is no simple crime that you contemplate. It's a staggering blow against your own country. That doesn't concern me overly. I shall make greater profit from this affair than all my other adventures put together. Then you refuse? Oh, most assuredly. In fact, I intend to ensure the success of this venture tonight by liquidating you, Mr. Holmes. I... Uh, I think that is the American phrase. Quite. You, the one man intelligent enough to stand in my way. Oh, a gun. Oh, come now. This is not the Professor Moriarty, the master criminal I once knew. A dock rat could do as much. Did you think I was going to shoot you, Mr. Holmes? Oh, dear me, no. This is simply to prevent a troublesome scene. I expected you and made full arrangements. You see, my good Mr. Holmes, these shelves lift out. And you will rest somewhat uncomfortably in the false bottom of this sea chest. My sailor friend, Jack Brady, goes to sea immediately. Once out of sight of land, he pushes the chest overboard. Time up. Perhaps your good friend, Dr. Watson, can entitle this adventure the end of Sherlock Holmes. He will be disappointed. He intended to call it the end of Professor Moriarty. <laughs> Hurry. Right, sir. Brilliant man, Sherlock Holmes. Too bad he was honest. The one-legged man. He takes Mr. Holmes right to that carpenter shop. He, he knocks on the door. A man comes out, and, and in they go. Well, thank you, George. We'll take over the watch. Good night, Dr. Holmes. Good night. What does Mr. Holmes hope to accomplish for this masquerade? He hopes to frighten Moriarty into rushing Tobel into another hiding place. Moriarty's dead, I tell you. Look out. Over here, quick. Hey, just a minute. Who's that? Got there. Who's asking? Scotland Yard? Scotland. 
Half a mo, Governor, I'll show you my papers. Oh, Jack Brady, ship's carpenter. Shipping out tonight in the convoy. Destination unknown. My pal here's up and me get me chest aboard. Make them open at the start. Yes, go on. All right, come on. See for yourself. No, there's nothing here, Doctor. Just a couple of simple seafaring men. All right, get on with it. Thank you, Governor. Easy does it, right? Yeah. Good night, the Lordships. Yeah. Told you it was a lot of nonsense. I don't understand. That thing was weigh a ton. Look at those men staggering. You fit on something, Doctor. A few tools wouldn't take that much energy. We've just looked inside. On the top only, there might be a false bottom. Hey, you! You stop there! Stop or I'll shoot! so abruptly, huh? they dropped me on my head. Oh. Moriarty would have been delighted. So Professor Moriarty is alive? Alive and in possession of Dr. Tobel's coat. No good going back. They've all gone. And what are you going to do? Well, first I'm going to wash this filthy stuff off my face. Then I'm going to see Miss Eberly again. I've got to find some clue to the content of Dr. Tobel's message. Come along, quick. I only got one glimpse of the note while he was preparing it. He was seated at this desk. No, he was sitting on the couch when he wrote the message, but he sealed the envelope here. The message was written in ink with this pen? No, he used a pencil. This one. Thank you. Use this writing pad? Yes. Has it been used since? No. They should be here. They must be here. What, Mr. Holmes? The lead in this pencil is hard. Hard enough to make an impression on the coarse fibers of which this paper is made. The impressions at the moment are invisible. If we immerse this sheet in a solution of fluorescent salts, dry it, and then photograph it by ultraviolet light, the fibers broken by the writing will absorb less of the solution than other parts of the paper. Switch off the lights, Watson. We place the slide in the projector and turn on the light. Broken fibers appear darker than the rest of the paper and are therefore visible. Splendid, Holmes. Now I recognize that code. Do you remember a case we had some years ago? It's probably the same, alphabet substitution code. Yes, Watson. I believe Dr. Tobel meant to communicate with us by that means. Substitution of the alphabet? I don't understand. My dear, one of the oldest codes in use is based on the repetition of figures. E is the letter most used in the British language. Therefore, the figure most used probably, in this message, is E. T, A, O, I, and N follow in that order of frequency. You mean you can read these figures as if they were letters of the alphabet? <laughs> Elementary, my dear Miss Abley. Give me one minute, and you shall have the message. And what is the message, Watson? This fellow Tobel must have been pulling our legs. It's a lot of gibberish. I, Y, Z, L, M, T, H, K. <laughs> Reads like an eye doctor's chart. Dr. Tobel is a brilliant scientist. I saw immediately that he wouldn't send us a message so simple to decipher. Neither would he affix these top figures without a meaning. Then it isn't the Alfred substitution code. Yes, it is, Watson, but with a very clever variation. You see, the one, two, three figures means that we skip letters in that order. In other words, observe, Watson. The first letter, which is I, skips one and becomes J. The second letter, Y, skips two and becomes A, and the third skips three and becomes C. J-A-C. J-A-C-O-B-D-U-R-R-E-R. Jacob Dewar, a Swiss scientist and friend of Dr. Tubell's. P-A-L-A-C-E-C-R-E-S. Paris Crescent. 
Right. I say, Holmes, this Mandora must be important. Obviously, Watson. He must have some connection with the bomb site, or Tobel wouldn't have taken so much trouble to see that I got his name. Take down the rest of the message. J O S E P H Joseph. E M D D I A C. Number four doesn't make any sense. He must have used some other variations. Four names and addresses. Jacob Dura, Professor Farrell, Dr. Kern. And this fourth infernal cipher, which doesn't fit the code. Christmas boxes. Watson, I'm beginning to see the plan. Dr. Tobel divided his bombsite into four parts, just as we brought it back from Switzerland. He's given one section of the mechanism to each of these famous scientists. What a fascinating plan. You see, each part is useless without the other three. And undoubtedly, none of these scientists is known to each other. Professor Moriarty also has the code. And we must allow for his ability to decipher it. We haven't time to break the fourth code now. We must get to the first three men before Moriarty does. Paris Crescent first? Right. I'll go and get a taxi. Miss Evely, will you please wait here till we return? Thank you. Yeah, where are you going, sir? Jacob, do you live here? Yes, but there's been a bit of trouble, sir. You can't go in. Inspector Lestrade's orders. Well, oh. here, just a minute, sir. That's Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Oh, very sorry, sir. Dead. Dead as a doornail. Mr. Holmes, how did you know about this? The yard only heard 15 minutes ago. We'd better hurry, Holmes. There's still time to save Farrell and Kern. Too late, Watson. Now, this time, Farrell and Kern are dead, too. What? Deductions again, Mr. Holmes? Facts, Inspector. Oh, facts. But how do you know about them? Elementary, my dear Watson. This man has been dead for at least two hours. Moriarty isn't wasting any time. Hello? This is Lestrade. Put me on to McAtee. Well, McAtee? Now, this is Lestrade. Do you know anything about two men named... Uh... Farrell and Kern. Farrell and Kern? What, both of them? Oh. Thank you. The port only came in two seconds before I telephoned. But what on earth are we going to do, Holmes? Mariata's got a big start and he's got the code. Note this, Watson. Scotland Yard reports two murders. That makes three in all. But there were four boxes and four codes. Obviously, Moriarty hasn't broken the fourth code either. What is the name of the fourth man? I can't remember. What is the name of the fourth man? I have forgotten. What is the name of the fourth man? I don't know. I don't know! What is the name of the fourth man? I can't remember! Oh, oh, oh. What is the name of the fourth man? Holmes, don't you realize what this means to England? We not only lose the Tobel bomb site ourselves, but Germany gets it. Coventry, Bath, Plymouth, London. Not to mention Norwich and Owl. All over again, but with ten times the effect. Don't you suppose I realize that's Reginald? Don't you suppose I'd give my life to decode the last name of that message? There must be some solution. Naturally, Watson. Oh, you needn't be rude. I need a drink. I'm all in. I can't think anymore. All these letters and figures whirling through my brain. It's all twisted round. Twisted round? Huh? That's it. That's what? Twisted around, you said. So simple, I never thought of it. Reverse the slide. You see, gentlemen, these figures are now identical with the first three names. In other words, all the figures of name number four are written backwards and read from right to left until we reverse the slide when they read correctly from left to right. Now, let's work on it. Pencil, Watson. But, um, why would Dr. Tobel want to reverse the figures of number four? 
An added precaution, Lestrade, in case the cipher should fall into the wrong hands. Oh, quite a compliment to you, Mr. Holmes. I mean, uh, Tobel taking for granted that you would recognize the difference. Thank you. Yeah. F R E D E R I C K H O F F N E R. Frederick Hoffman. S L O A N E S Q U. Sloan Square. We must leave at once. Wait a minute. Information? Will you please give me the address of a Frederick Hoffner in Sloan Square? I'll break this code. I'll find the name of that fourth man before Holmes does. There is not much more time. The submarine is to pick us up off Sheerness in six hours. I've beaten home so far. We'll meet your confounded submarine with the bombsite intact. But Tobel is unconscious again. As a last resort, we could abandon the code and take Tobel to Germany. You try Tobel again in here. Wait. Spilling that glass of water was a very fortunate accident, my dear street brawler. Dr. Tobel's perversion of the cipher was so simple that it fooled us. I was looking for something ingenious. This is ingenuous. He simply reversed the cipher. F R E D T -E R I C K H O F F N E R S L O A N E Frederick Hoffner, Sloan Square. Of course, Hoffner would be the perfect selection. Then you want us to attend uh, to Hoffner? No, we can use Hoffner. He's a brilliant scientist. If Dr. Tobel doesn't recover from your persuasion, Hoffner will be able to put the four parts together. You and Godfrey will call on Hoffner, and you will bring him here with the fourth section of the bomb site. Hurry. Put up your hands, Professor Hoffner. Again, Professor. Sherlock Holmes. An improvement on the other makeup. Don't you think so, Professor? So you think you've beaten me, Holmes? I have. The real Hoffner is safely in the hands of Scotland Yard. But I still have Tobel. Now I shall sell Germany the inventor instead of the invention. You've learned nothing from him, in spite of all your torture. Otherwise, you wouldn't be trying so desperately to collect the four sections of the bomb site. A keen observation, my dear Holmes. But observe further that you are now in my hands, and I have profited by my last mistake of allowing underlings to attend to you. Holmes took my place, and while the Nazis were inside with him, he instructed me to attach a small apparatus underneath their car. He's a brilliant fellow, Holmes. I helped him prepare the apparatus. Did you really, Doctor? That is, I poured in the luminous paint when you told me to. Very clever, Dr. Watson. The apparatus drips at regular intervals. 
leaving a trail of luminous paint. I see, leading us to Moriarty and Mr. Ohm. Why are you so confident, Professor? Only a suggestion. But how do you know that Scotland Yard isn't waiting to break in at this very moment? I selected this address with special care. No one can find it. Not even Scotland Yard. Relax, Mr. Holmes. There's no escape. I might suddenly dash to the window, break it open, and shout for a passerby. There are no passers-by. The glass of the window is unbreakable, and the room is soundproof. This is my stronghold, Holmes, equipped with all the modern conveniences of a successful man in my profession. Sit down. They've faded out again, sir. I don't understand, Lestrade. It stopped, and then it started, and now it stopped again. Maybe the apparatus broke down. Oh, a suggestion, gentlemen. At a crossroad back there, a car might have gone over the spots of paint, picked some up on the tires, and uh, left his false trail. That's, That's just, just what, what I was, I was about. about to suggest myself. Very well, we'll try it. Now, Holmes, what should it be? The gas chamber, the cup of hemlock, or just a simple bullet through your brain? You disappoint me, Professor. Indeed? Yes. Somehow I always thought that in the end, you proved to be just an ordinary cutthroat. You know me better, Holmes. Gas, poison, bullets. I assure you, Professor, were our positions reversed, I should have something more colorful, more imaginative to offer. Hmm. I'm satisfied to be the winner. I shall be alive. Alive, yes. The winner, no. For in the last analysis, I shall have proved the more resourceful man. You didn't trap me here. I came here because I wanted to, to prevent your getting Hoffner. And all you can do in return is to commit ordinary murder to relieve your sense of frustration. And what, my good Mr. Holmes, could you have conceived that would have been so much more colorful? Well, even offhand. I can improve upon your suggestions considerably, but that's only natural, of course. And what is this brilliant idea of yours? Do you know that a man dies if he loses five pints of blood? Yes, of course you do. I should have you placed on an operating table, inject a needle into your veins, and slowly draw off your life's blood. The needle to the last, eh, Holmes? Slowly, drop by drop, the blood would be drawn from your body. You would be aware of every exquisite second to the very end. You would be watching yourself die scientifically, noting every reaction, and in full possession of your faculties. Interesting. Yes, isn't it? I humbly submit, Professor, that to the very end, I've been more resourceful than yourself. You've played it to my hands, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Time and again, I've used this place as a haven for friends of mine, injured in altercations with Scotland Yard. I have a fully equipped hospital here. Trail goes this way, Inspector. Drop by drop, Holmes. Drop by drop. Uh, in a way, I'm almost sorry. You were a stimulating influence to me. But it was obvious that I should win in the end. Only a matter of moments now. Take Tobel down to the boat. Start the engine.
closer to the end, Holmes. Closer and closer. Each second, a few more drops leave your desiccated body. And you can feel them, can't you? You're perfectly conscious, aren't you, Holmes? I shall be conscious long after you are dead, Moriarty. Ha! Still the same old swaggering, conceited Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> He is a shot. He'll kill Holmes. You keep an eye on the boat. Don't make a move till Dr. Watson and I get inside. Understand? You wait here, Professor Offner. Come on, Doctor. The water's this way. Moriarty's rooms must be up here. I can't wait any longer, Holmes. You'll have to forgive the crudity, my friend. This is only the coup de grace. Still, Moriarty, you're done for. Holmes! On the contrary, Inspector, my men are outside. It's you who are done for. Really? Just take a look out the window and see for yourself. He'll try to get to the speedboat. Yes, he won't go without Tobel. Come on. Wait. Dr. Tobel, Inspector. He ain't too badly hurt. Thank heavens for that. Look after him, will you, Hoffner? I'll take him to the car. Hmm, I expected you, but not with my revolver. You realize, of course, when I was brought into the room blindfolded, that I heard the mechanism of this door? Of course. And yet, knowing that I'd heard it, you planned this way of escape. Not very flattering to me. Suicide, my dear Professor. Not at all, my dear Holmes. You see, this is not an ordinary passageway. <laughs> oh, my mistake. It has been as equally well prepared as the rest of my humble quarters. I have a trap set. Electric eye principle. My passing through will break the beam, and automatically open a highly deceptive trap door. Behind me, of course, my pursuer, meaning you, my dear Holmes, will then be plunged 60 feet into the sewers below. Holmes! Ah! Holmes! Poor Moriarty. I neglected to warn him. It seems some careless person came across his trap door and left it open. Come along, Watson. Germany wanted the Tobel bombsite. We'll send her thousands of them in RAF planes. Yes. Thanks to Mr. Sherlock Holmes and to Mrs. Tobel. And of course, Inspector Lestrade. Oh, uh, that's all right, miss. Things are looking up, Holmes. This little island's still on the map. Yes. This fortress, built by nature for herself. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm, 
this England.